Hello everyone, welcome back to Flying Through the Helicopter Flying Handbook. In this video, we're going to continue our work with Chapter 9, which is all about basic maneuvers. And in particular, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about takeoffs, and then we are going to talk about ground reference maneuvers. So when it comes to takeoffs, you have two basic choices. You can take off from a hover, which is probably the most common situation or you can take off from the ground so when we take off from the hover what do we do well we're going to start creeping forward and we've talked about this in past videos and as we get a little bit of speed we're going to have that right tilt we're going to have that little bit of a dip toward the right if you will as the rotor system becomes more effective. We talked about that when we talked about aerodynamics. And you're going to have to resist that by pushing left on the cyclic. And then as you speed up a little bit more, you're going to get into your blow black. And you have to push through that. And then you're going to proceed at the recommended speed for your helicopter, following the profile that is likely on the HV diagram for your chopper so that's if you do a takeoff from a hover now sometimes you'll want to do a takeoff from the surface and why would you want to do that uh, honestly the biggest reason you would want to do that is if maybe there's some loose items maybe there's some sand or some snow for example and you just want to get off the ground right away so we'll walk through that here in a little bit now let me talk about ground reference maneuvers so ground reference maneuvers these are in a sense a little bit of a carryover from fixed wing you, as you know by now uh, it's a fixed wing world and everything in aviation is fixed wing centric so for fixed wing pilots they have to do these ground reference maneuvers and they're actually on their check rides. Well, guess what? For helicopter pilots, they're not. But yet, there is a requirement to do ground reference maneuvers in order to be able to solo in a helicopter. So what are the various ground reference maneuvers? Well, one of them is the rectangular course. So in the rectangular course, you're essentially just flying a box. Well, here's the surprise. Every time you fly the traffic pattern, which is the subject of the next video, you are always flying a rectangular box. So this is nothing new. Now, when it comes to flying this rectangular box, you're going to want to correct for the wind. So if here's my rectangular box. Now again, this is not drawn over an airport as a traffic pattern, but you can certainly think of this as a traffic pattern. Okay, so if I have a wind, in this case, it's blowing from right to left, and I'm trying to make this pattern, and I'm trying to make it a nice rectangle, I'm gonna have to crab into the wind. So let's assume that I start right here the wind is right at my back very conveniently I'm in downwind and then as I go to turn onto what if this was a traffic pattern would be my base leg I need to turn a little bit more than 90 degrees in order to have a proper crab angle so that my ground track is 90 degrees from the previous ground track. And then as I come around to my direct upwind, now I turn a little bit less than 90 degrees only because my nose was pointed inward already. And I fly with no crab, and then now on this side, the wind is blowing me inward, so I have to crab outward. 
So here, once again, I'm going to turn and I'm going to turn less than 90 degrees because my nose is going to point outward now. And then I come around and because my nose is pointed outward, I have to turn more than 90 degrees to get back onto my initial leg. So that's a rectangular course. And when you go to take your knowledge test, you might actually see questions about this rectangular course. It's a pretty common question that gets asked. And they will ask things such as, which one of these turns is going to be more than 90 degrees? And in the case of this situation, this turn in this upper right hand corner is going to be more than 90 degrees as is this turn in the upper left hand corner and the ones on the bottom are going to be less so that's a rectangular course that's the, going to be the first thing that we'll do and then there are a couple of other maneuvers there's an s turn sometimes they call them s turns across the road it doesn't have to be a road it just has to be anything that's kind of straight and hopefully perpendicular with the wind. So whenever you're doing these ground reference maneuvers, you normally try to enter them downwind. And why would you do that? When you're downwind, your ground speed is highest. When your ground speed is highest, you're going to have the highest bank to make a turn because you have to turn steeper in order to make a constant radius or a smaller radius turn the faster you're going. So you'll enter this downwind where you have the highest ground speed. Once you hit your reference point, you will start your turn and you're gonna have your steepest bank. And then as you come around, you're going to start shallowing out the bank. And why is that? Well, now you're starting to get into the wind. So you're going upwind. Now, once you're upwind, you're going to have a shallower bank. Otherwise, you're going to be too far inside, right? So this half circle isn't going to be pretty instead it's going to look kind of weird where you're going to end up say over here and then the the back side of it will also look weird so once you come to this point and you're in the second half of this now you're upwind so it's a very small bank and then as you come around the wind starts becoming from your back and you once again will have to increase the bank. So that's an S turn across the road. And what else? We have turns around a point. So what is a turn around a point? It is basically a constant radius circle. So it is kind of like S turns, but two S turns put together. So once again, ideally, you're going to enter this maneuver downwind. And here's a little tip that I always tell, especially fixed wing students, pick four reference points to go around your central reference point. And that will help you maintain this distance. There's a tendency for people to stare at the center reference point and kind of fly into it. They'll spiral into it. And that's not what you want. Okay, so you'll start with your steepest bank once you're beam your point. And then once again, as the wind stops becoming from your back so much, you're going to start shallowing out the bank because your ground speed is going to go down. And then as you come around where the wind is in your face, now you're really going to shallow out the bank. And then as you come back around, once again, you're going to get into a steeper bank. And it's gradually going to get more and more steep until 
your back around. So that is a couple of ground reference maneuvers. So let's go ahead and fly it. All right. So we'll go ahead and we'll do a quick takeoff from the surface. Let me go ahead and roll up my power a little bit. Gently pulling the collective. Giving it a little pedal, starting to move, give it a little pedal, pulling the power and going right into my takeoff roll. All right, so pushing forward and slowly taking off. All right, and now we're gonna try a normal takeoff from a hover. So let me first get into a hover. Slowly pulling up my collective, watching my RPMs, waiting for any kind of a drift. See a little drift to the right, a little bit of left pedal, a little more left pedal, a little more left pedal. Pulling it up, pulling it up, giving it a little bit of throttle, and there we go. Up into my hover, giving it a little bit more throttle. So I'm getting a low RPM warning. All right, so now I'm ready to do my takeoff. I'm just gonna start hovering forward, nice and slow. Watching my RPMs are a little bit high. Just kind of pushing forward. Start by crawling. There's that little tilt. Starting to get a little blowback, pushing through that, and now letting it climb out. Okay, so now we're going to try a rectangular course, and I'm actually just going to use the airport here at Mount Pocono. And I am cranked up the wind. It's a nice 30 knot wind down mostly 1 3. And what I'm going to do is I brought up the GPS so you can see right now I'm heading upwind and my ground speed is only 46 knots but my airspeed is about 70. Right? So right now I'm going upwind of course we said that that's kind of opposite to how you should enter this but we're going to ignore that for now and we're going to talk about how do I fly this pattern in a good way? So we're not going to actually land. We're just going to fly around the pattern at altitude here. You can see my ground speed's a bit low here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try to kind of fly down the other runway. It's not really 90 degrees, but I think you'll get the general idea and I'll give you some sort of a reference point. So I'll go ahead and start my turn. And again, I'm going to fly less than 90 degrees. That's how much I'm going to turn. Now you can see my ground speed is starting to increase a little bit. You can see the road coming into the airport and also a little bit of the runway below me. Now my ground speed is closer to 70 knots. Now I'm going to turn on to my downwind, which is more than a 90 degree turn. And the reason that it's so high is that I was facing outward again.
I'll go ahead and turn onto a base. Here again, I have to turn more than 90 degrees because I have to face inward to keep from getting blown away from the airport. So there is the end of my runway. And you'll notice that where the nose is pointing is not where I'm going, right? The nose is pointing about a thousand foot down the runway, but I'm lining up to be at the end of the runway. All right. And then once again, if I come around, now I'm starting to go into the wind. And my ground speed is going down. All right, so let's try some S turns across the road. In this case, I'm going to use the other runway. So we're entering on our downwind. So we have a pretty high speed. As soon as I cross that runway, I'm going to crank in a bit of a bank. So I got quite a bit of a bank. And then I want to start decreasing that bank a little bit as I come around because I want to hit it exactly perpendicular. Notice my ground speed is going down now. And then I go right into a second turn. Now this one is a lot more shallow. And I'm about halfway through the turn. And now I'm going to come back around. And I have to increase the bank again. Because once again, my ground speed is going way up. And I've got stuff behind me. All right. And I understand it's not the easiest thing to see um, in the simulator here, especially because I'm only showing you my center screen. I'm not showing you the sides. So that is a S turn across the road. Okay, so now we're gonna show you a turn around a point and it's gonna be kind of interesting. I'm showing you my left window, if you will. And let's just see how this goes. So I'm gonna start where I am going on my downwind leg, you look at my ground speed is a hundred plus knots right now. And I'm trying to make a nice constant radius circle around the intersection of those two runways. Now that doesn't mean by the way, that this has to look like it's at a constant point. All that means is that the distance is constant. So I'm gonna to try to maintain about this distance. Right now I'm going kind of crosswind. You'll notice that my ground speed is about equal to my airspeed, which is around 70. And I'm gonna start coming around. And now as I come around, what you're gonna see is that my ground speed is gonna start going down because I'm getting better aligned with runway 13 over here and runway 13 is the one that has 30 knots of wind blowing right down it at the moment. All right, so I'm just kind of slowly coming around here, trying to keep that distance constant. So I have a very shallow bank here because I'm going very slowly and also on top of that, the wind is trying to blow me in toward my point because the wind is coming 
off my nose and a little bit to the right. So now I'm coming back around. Again, that wind is trying to blow me inward. I'm just going to go ahead and level the rotor for a second and try to regain my lost distance from my point. And I'll start bringing it back around. Now my ground speed is going up as I come around back onto my downwind leg. Okay, so that is a little bit about takeoffs and ground reference maneuvers. Again, this is not a maneuver that actually appears on your check ride, but you are supposed to do some sort of ground reference maneuvers before you solo. So on to the next part of this chapter. See you there.